thanks for his love Amen. always. Amen. As I realized that it was his love why I was standing there. Not his love. And it's because of his love why we are all here today. Amen. And truly, I'm grateful. And truly, I believe that you're also grateful to God for his love. Amen. It's just a wonderful privilege to be in the house of God Amen. today. Yes, you do. I mean, because we've all had journeys that we've been on, and we're still on our journey. But our journey has not yet ended. No. But I just want to talk about the goodness of Jesus. Amen. Just like in the scripture, what we read, it said in that hour when Peter and John, they went up to the temple to pray. And I realize when you get down in prayer, I mean, it's not just uttering words. Amen. I mean, get down in prayer. When you start to pray, you feel that connection to God. Something must happen. And as I said that this man was there, and he was always asking day in and day out. He said from his mother's womb he was crippled. But this day came when salvation came onto this man. He must have thought he would have get some money or maybe some food. We don't know. But we give God thanks that his children were there. Yes. And their heart was looking to God. Amen. Because as they said, look on us. Yes. Silver and gold are yeah. by not. But such as I have. Give ID. I give ID. Now, when I hear that part of the scripture, it makes me start to think. Right. Such as I have. Yes. Yeah. That's right. So I realize that they know that they have that connection yes. Amen. with God. Amen. And they had that surety that is true. in God. Amen. Amen. Because if they wasn't sure they could have give That's what, they, what they don't have. That's true. That's true. But they knew what they had Amen. is power yes. and it can be life. Amen. Amen. So silver and gold are by now. But such as I have, give I, give. I can buy these. Amen. And then another wonderful part of the scripture is that in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Shut up, you 
Linda. Right? It wasn't, it wasn't Mama, but I give it. I'm talking about Jesus. Talking about how Jesus can change your life. My temple was really, really bad, Bridget. One night I was riding my bicycle and somebody started to run me down and said, Give me a bicycle, give me a bicycle. I'm thinking, is this when I'm sick or something? But this is my bicycle. So I run now. Mom doesn't know this happened. First time Mom's hearing it. So I ride down now quick, fling the bicycle over the gate, and I get the cut loss, and I start running down, and I say, come for the bicycle. <laughs> but I'm talking about when Jesus runs your heart. Banging, banging. It didn't feel normal. 
So I called 111 and they said to me, you need to get to the hospital within an hour. Uh, brethren, you know, sometimes we, you know, the devil wants to put doubt in our minds, but, you know, I know the God that I serve. Praise God. And I asked my dad, thank God for bringing my dad here tonight. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. My dad took me to the hospital and, you know, they saw me. And because of COVID, they don't want to just admit anybody to hospital. So they, I was waiting in the waiting room and they checked me over and then they said, nothing is wrong with you, just go home. You're gonna, your GP's going to call you at 1.30. And so I said, okay. I called my dad and I said, can you come and pick me up? Because they're, just, they're saying that I should go home, you know, it's nothing. It's maybe just a headache. Go home, take paracetamol. And I was waiting outside for my dad to pick me up. And the GP who was supposed to call me at 1.30 called me 15 minutes early, explained what the symptoms I was feeling, and then he said to me, stay right there, we need to urgently move you to the medical assessment team, because it's not normal. And anyway, so I called my dad and I said, they're keeping me, you know, stay where you are, and I'll let you know um, what happens later. So they rushed me urgently to the medical assessment team, and they were checking me over, they did a CT scan, and brethren, when they did the CT scan, the next thing I know, I was on a ward with so many different wires in my arm, and you know, they really, really, <laughs> I can't even go into a long story, but they really, really just, yeah, strung me up with everything, and I couldn't even feel my arms, I was just zoned out. And anyway, so they did the scan, and the doctor came back and they said, you have something called a subnacroid hemorrhage. Um, we have to keep you in hospital, and the next morning, they're going to do a procedure where they're going to put a needle in my spine and drain out some fluid from my brain, a spinal tap. So I said, and I remember the doc when the doctor came in and he said that to me, I said, okay. And then he said, I'm going to come back in 30 minutes, let me know your decision. Brethren, at that moment, I'm not going to lie, I'm human. I started to cry. I started to cry and I said, God, please. You know, at that moment, brethren, as I said, God always has a plan. Yes. Brother Joel, thank God for Brother Joel, he yes. video called me at that precise moment. Yes. And I showed him the room that I was in. And I said, Joe, it's like they just left me here to die. Mm. And, then he said, and then at that moment, when he said that, when I said that to him, something said to me, ask Joel to ask Sister Shelby, do I go ahead with this procedure? And it just, it just came up to me. And I, and I said to Joel, well, can you ask us to show me whether I should do this, what the symptoms are, should I go ahead with it? And he called, he did a three-way call and to and show me came on the line, myself and Brother Joel, we were talking and to show me and Brother Joel, they put one powerful prayer on the phone. Yes. The phone was on the speaker and the doctors, they heard, they overlooked in the room. And all I could do is, I said, in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And I believe every single word of that yeah. prayer. Yeah. Brethren, God is a good God. Yes. I looked up the symptoms for subarachnoid hemorrhage, and it said bleeding and bleeding of the brain. And I said, God, I don't have that. I don't have that. And you know, when they, when she, when um, both Charmaine and Brother Joel finished praying, I remember I lay back on the bed and I said, God. Father, my faith looks up to thee. Yeah. Thou love of God. Yeah. I say, God, the woman with the issue of the blood, she had a need. And I, re I remember before that, I was reading that scripture. And what I really gained from it was that she spent her money on worldly physicians. That couldn't help her. She heard that Jesus was passing by. And brethren, even though she was unclean, because at that time, yes. you know, you couldn't be around anybody. Yes. And she pushed herself in the crowd because she heard that Jesus was passing by. And she said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment. And brethren, when I look into it and I said, God, he ne God never laid his hands on that woman. She was in need and she touched Jesus herself. And I said, God, I am in need of a breakthrough tonight. And brethren, I lay back on the hospital bed. And then afterwards, the doctor came in and I said to the doctor, you know, I'm not gonna go ahead with this procedure. The doctor looked at me and said, you're mad. He said, do you know that you can die within 48 hours? 
You know, there was a 17-year-old who came in with the same symptoms that I had. That he didn't do the procedure, he went home and he died. And I said to myself, God, I put my faith in you tonight. I put my faith and trust in you tonight that God, you will bring me out. Brethren, I signed the papers and I discharged myself. And the doctor, he looked at me and he said, who's your next of kin? I said, my mum. He said to me, is your mum here? Thank God, it was around nine o'clock at night. My mum came back to the hospital and he said, she doesn't know what she's doing, you know? My mum said that she's a, she's a big woman. She knows what she's doing. If she wants to go home, she's gonna go home. Friend, some of you know the story. My mum, she couldn't have children. The doctor said to her to sign the papers to remove her womb. But through prayer, through fasting on Bishop Douglas, myself and my sister are here today. I said the same thing that my mum had is the same God that I'm going to put my faith and my trust in tonight. Brethren, I went home. And, you know, I just, you know, wasn't feeling too good, but I slept. And, you know, I thank God for the brethren because my phone just couldn't stop ringing. And people prayed, and, you know, so the saints prayed. They prayed, some people prayed on the phone. I heard that prayers were going up for me in church. Yeah. The day I had to go back for an MRI scan, and it was on a Wednesday, and I was supposed to call grandma to tell her I'm going for the scan. But God had it be that grandma called me on the same day of the scan. She didn't know, and she said to me, put your hand on your head. And I said, I haven't got any oil at the moment. She said, it's not the oil, it's your faith. I put my hand on my head. And Reverend, I just felt the power of prayer through the phone. And I went for that scan, Reverend. The scan results were supposed to come out on Wednesday this week. When I called the doctors, they said to me, they're too busy to give me my results. So I have to call again in the morning. Reverend, the Thursday I called, and they, anyway, it was a long story, but the night before, I remember, I knelt down, and I said, you know, I remember this, the, the um, three Hebrew boys, and in my own words, that they said, if my God, even if he doesn't deliver, they're still not gonna bow. And I said, God, even if the results show that there is still this hemorrhage on my brain, I'm still gonna serve you. Reverend, I remember, and I anointed my head with oil. I got some oil and I anointed it. The next day, the results came in through email, and I looked at it, Reverend, it said 100% clear. 100% clear. God is a good God. God is a good God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
next barrow. So where we're living, there's only one bus run on that, on that road and there's two six streets. Come to Archway, at the gate of us of Archway, come to Holloway, then from Holloway to Clapton, then from Clapton to Leverage Road, and from Leverage Road, another bus to take Angel to school. I told myself to go to work. I'm going to go from Monday to Sunday. And then church in between that. And I remember we're doing, let's get up at 5 o'clock every morning and before that to catch that, that 2 6 street bus. Because they don't get a bus, it comes every hour. So if you don't get that bus within an hour, you're going to be late and late. 
And on Monday, we went to the agency again. And I said to the man, I said, dear, so on, so I tried to the truth to the man, I said, I'm going away, and the person need to move on the property. And I said to him, what if you stay in here? Whatever I said to him. And he said to me, all his years have been to work in, in, in the agency, in, in that field. He has never moved anyone into a property with somebody being in the property. God let God give me the wisdom to tell the man what I would like and for the man to agree to sign over the property to me while somebody living in here. It never happened, never happened. And I know that is a fan of the Almighty God. Even somebody was saying to me, how can you do this girl I said, no, ma'am. Because she's signing over to me. She cannot 
good that I can be found in his presence another Sunday. Nothing the good that I have done, but it's, it's mercy is why I'm here today. Greetings to our mother and pastor, evangelist ministers, everyone in Jesus' name. I was grateful to God that I could be here another time. Um, when you don't see me, please pray for me because it's not that I'm outside doing stuff. I'm at work. I work seven days a week, so if you don't see me, pray for me. Um, and just thank you, God, you know, that um, he's keeping me. I was saying to myself um, over a couple of weeks, like, I was saying to God, why me? If you understand, why, why did he choose me out of everybody? Do you know what I mean? And I'm, I think about it because growing up, um, obviously my parents were sinners. They used to go to the clubs and everything. Obviously, I don't know about that, but... They, they, sent me, they sent me and my older brother, Brother Stefan, for those that don't know, that's my older brother. They used to send us to Sunday school every Sunday. So I was always said, from young, that seed's been planted in me. No, no matter what I do or try to die, or die, that seed's planted in me. And I'm asking God to have his mercy on my life because I know there's a blessing for me. In some way it says, I know there's a blessing for me. And, you know, um, I was reading... I was reading in the scripture last night, um, I was reading Daniel 1, um, and it was saying about uh, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, that they will not eat of the king's meat, and how that they saw, how they saw um, that they were different from those that was eating the meat. And I asked God that he would have his mercy on me, because, you know, as I'm going to continue to read the rest of uh, the book of Daniel, I know that obviously they ended up in the fire and they're saying that they did not bow, you know. And I'm asking God that he has his mercy on me because it's not easy, brethren. No, no matter how it sometimes we think it's easy or we just say it's easy, it's not. Especially as a young brother, it's not easy. You know, I speak to him, Michael's my best friend, I speak to him all the time and like, it's, it's not easy being in church, you know. The stuff that we go through that's not talk, that we don't talk about and you know, it's, it's hard at times to, there's so much things outside, you know, there's, people say there's nothing outside, there's stuff outside, trust me, do you know what I mean? There's things outside, there's all sorts outside, don't, don't get me wrong, don't say that I do anything like that, but I'm just saying there's things outside, you know, you know, you speak to people at work, you speak to your outside friends and associates, there's things outside, but I'm asking God that I'll, that I'll hold on because I made a vow that when I got baptised in that baptism point at the back, that I said I want to make heaven my home. And I'm asking God that when I get low in the spirit, when I, not say that, because I never say that I don't want to come to church. I always want to come to church because it's a time to give God thanks and to give him praise while I'm alive. But when I'm low in the spirit and I feel that you can't go on or you can't move forward, I'm asking God that he will remind me of my testimony. And also that he'll remind me that I'm called for a purpose, even though I might not know what the purpose is at the moment, but I'm asking God that he'll keep me under his blood. Please pray for me in Jesus' name. In a good old gospel way, that's the way I need to stay.
dead in Christ shall rise. So we which are alive and remain, praise God, shall call it up to meet him in the air. What a hope we have in Jesus. Praise God if we stay faithful. Praise God. We're going to be with Jesus someday. And we want to give him thanks and praise. And worship him. Praise God. Yes.
the service as God saying to let the spirit move. I was looking within myself and the scripture that came to me was in Psalm 78. And um, in the scripture, God said, I don't know what verse it is, but in the scripture, God was saying that they worship me with their lips and not their hearts. The wrath of, in verse 31, the wrath of God came upon them and slew the fattest of them and smote down the chosen men of Israel. For all this, they sinned still and believed not for his wondrous works. Therefore, their days did he consume in vanity and their years in trouble. When he slew them, then they sought him and they returned and inquired early after God. And then in, okay, verse 35. And they remembered that God was their rock and the high God their redeemer. Nevertheless, they did flatter him with their mouth and they lied unto him with their tongues. For their heart was not right with him, neither were they steadfast in his covenant. But he, and this is, this is what I'm saying, I just thank God for his love and I thank God for his mercy. Because oftentimes we come in church and when we're sitting in the congregation, we feel nice and we say that we worship God, we say that we love the Lord, we say that the Lord is here, but the way that we act, how are we act when we're at home? How are we act when we're at work? That's why in, in Isaiah it was saying that our, tra- our, iniquities, uh, our iniquities testify against us. Because we say that we are, we may say that we are holy, we may look holy the way that we dress, the way that our title we might be an evangelist, a minister, a singer, whatever we do in, in church, we look holy. That's the appearance that we give. But are we holy? And in here they were saying that when God, when he slew them, then they sought him. And I was asking God, I don't want to just come to church and come to God and turn to God when things are going wrong. I should worship God always. Even when things are going right, I should still worship God and not just come to God when I need favors. And even though they did, they lied with their, they lied with their heart. And they said, they said that they were worshiping, they act like they're worshiping God. God said, even though they did all of that, he said, in verse 38, he said, but he, being full of compassion, forgave their iniquity and destroyed them not. Yea, many a time did he his anger away and did not stir up his wrath. For he remembered that they were but flesh and a wind that passeth away and cometh not again. How oft did they provoke him in the wilderness and grieve him in the desert? Yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. They remembered not his hand, nor the day when he delivered them from his enemy. How he had wrought his signs in Egypt and his wonders in the field of Zion. And it goes on to say what God did for Israel. And, I was, and as I said that we're spiritual Israel, I'm asking God that we, when we're in church, that we're not ungrateful. That we won't be ungrateful for what God has done. And we may say that we're grateful to God, but it doesn't look like it if we're, when we come in church, not giving him our all. When we come in church, not worshiping him to the extent that we should. And I was just asking God to help me. And even hearing the testimonies of um, Sister Hannah and Sister Kia, that God is such a wondrous God and he does so many great works. And as I said, this the, the song just keeps coming up to me every time I, I speak. It always says, Lord, I've heard of showers of blessing. Showers of blessing, so refreshing. Because even looking at the old videos when we see the, the signs and wonders, we hear about the signs and wonders, said, Lord, I've heard of it. We've heard that God is a deliverer. We've heard that God is a healer. And it says that, the song says that mercy drops round us are falling. Because God is still answering prayers. God is still healing. But they're just mercy drops. They're just drops of mercy. You know why? Because God, God still needs to get his glory. God still needs to get his praise. So that's how we get the mercy drops. But it says, Lord, I've heard of showers of blessing. Showers of blessing, so refreshing. It said, let some drops now fall on me. And I'm just, as Norma says, sometimes we need to think about what the songwriter was thinking. The songwriter, they said that, Lord, I've heard of shouts of blessings. That means they haven't experienced it yet. That means they're asking God, that he, and they said, let some drops now fall on me. And the, there's other version of the song that says, it says, even me, even me. It says, blessing others, oh bless me. Because it says, Lord, I've heard of it. God, I've heard what you did for pastor. God, I've heard what you did for evangelist Cameron. God, I've heard what you did for my mum. But it said, Lord, let some drops now fall on me. You have to be selfish with it. As um, Minister Gregory used to say, he said, when you see your brother's being on fire, throw 
pour water on yours. Because right now it's time to be selfish. The, the person said, no, it's a, that's what I'm saying, it's an individual thing. They said, Lord, let some drops now fall on me. And the song said, even me, Lord. Even me, Lord. Let some drops now fall on me. And they didn't stop there. They said, even me, Lord. Even me, Lord. Let some drops now fall on me. And the, there's another version of the song that says, Lord, I've heard of showers of blessings. Showers of blessings that are full and free. You know why? Because God already promised. God promised his Holy Ghost. God promised that he would never leave us. God said, a broken or contract heart, we will not despise. All these things God has promised. And he says that the blessings are full and free. They are free. We can easily get them. But how can we get them? How can we get the showers if our hearts aren't with God? How can we get the showers if we're saying that we're with God, but our hearts aren't with God? There is no way that we can get the showers if our hearts aren't with God. And I've been asking God to help me. Because even, even I was looking at it, I was speaking to Auntie Anna, and um, she was saying that, that somebody was saying that pe some people in church are like scaffolding. And I've been asking God to help me because I want to be a part of the church of God. I don't want to just be there for the numbers. I don't just be there to show faith. I want to be a part of the church of God. And, I've, and brethren, when you see brethren going away, or you see brethren backsliding, or some brethren that haven't been here in a long time. You have to pray for them, I understand. But some of them are just scaffolding. They're just there for an appointed time. Because when God wants to send his showers of blessing, there can't be any hindrance. Some, pe some, brethren, some people in church are coming to side church. They come in church for a reason. They come in church because, some come in church because they're lonely. Some come in church because they need deliverance. But some come in church to cause trouble. And that's what I'm saying, brethren. God sometimes has to remove, as I said, when, when you have the scaffolding, you build up the building, and when, it's done, when the building's finished done, you have to remove the scaffolding. Some people are just scaffolding. And I'm just asking God to help me. Because when God, and I said, because God promised, God promised that he would send the showers. He promised this a while, he promised this time ago. He said he's going to send the showers. But I'm saying, God, please, don't, when you're sending the showers, don't miss me. Because... As the song says, even me, when we sing songs in church, I'm not singing to you, you're not singing to me. I'm not saying, Lord, um, I'm not singing it on behalf of you. I'm saying it's an individual thing. It says, Lord, even me, even me. The song says that, it says, as Grandpa was saying, when you're going through your um, trials, when you're going through your tribulations, sometimes you come in church and we come in church and we're so heavy, we're so low, we're so upset. But the, but, the, but the, you have to take everything to God in prayer. It says, what, it says, um, oh, what, what needless pain you, pain you bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Because we, because of how many things we haven't carried to God in prayer, that's why we're worrying, that's why we're always in distress. But when you pray to God, you worry less. When you pray to God, he'll bring you through. And I'm just saying to God, God, please, Help me, because before I can, the, as the Bible says, the husband man must first be partake of the fruit. I don't want to be preaching to people, to brethren. I don't want to be singing to brethren. I don't want to be teaching brethren, and I'm a cast out. I don't want to be telling other brethren to, um, to get saved, and that our heart should be right, when my heart's not right, because I don't want to be a hypocrite. Even the Bible says, um, oh, hypocrites. And I was saying, God, please, I don't want to be the, like the Pharisees and the Sadducees, because they knew the word of God. They knew, but Jesus, that's what I'm saying, God help me, because Jesus was standing right in front of them. Right in front of them, and they still didn't believe that he was the Messiah. Sometimes we, we're in church, and God is right here. God is right here. And instead of us just opening up to God, instead of me just opening up to God, instead of us just understanding that God's presence, God's presence is something that we shouldn't take for granted. And if God is right here, why not touch him? Why not touch him? The song says Jesus is here right now. Reach out and touch him. I'm not waiting, brethren. I'm not waiting on the Lord. I'm not waiting on the Lord. God is waiting for me. God is waiting for us to launch out in the deep and to go and get closer to him. I don't want to wait on the Lord. But I've been waiting and waiting on the Lord for 10 years, 30 years, 40 years. 50 years and you're still waiting on the Lord stop the waiting and reach out and touch him and as I'm asking my God for myself it says Lord this song keeps coming Lord I've heard of shouts of blessing shouts of blessing so refreshing I'm not going to preach to other people I said Lord let some drops now fall on me I don't care about anybody else my mom's salvation can't help me my pastor's 
salvation can't help me. If grandma could save me, she would, but she can't. It's an, it's an individual thing. And God, God says, he says, um, when God speaks to us, he says, um, he says, as the song says, may I come in, behold me standing at the door and hear me pleading evermore. God's not doing, God's not forceful. God is not forceful at all. God says, may I come in. I would not plead with thee in vain. Remember all my griefs and pain. I died to ransom thee from sin. And that's why I don't understand how people can be in church and see the Holy Ghost perform, hear everything and still backslide. I don't understand how it can happen. Because, when, Grandma, when they backslide, when people backslide, they are damned. Especially when they know the word of the Lord. They backslide and they, and they can't blame, you can't blame anybody else. Nobody else can stop you from going to church. No one can cause you to backslide. It's because you deny the Lord and because your heart is not with God, that is why you backslidden. And we need to turn to God because God is coming. They were saying that God is coming in the 70s. Imagine how close God is now. We need to be awake. And it's not just about when God is coming. We don't know when we're gonna die. Tomorrow, somebody, tomorrow you don't know. You don't know what can happen. People are, they're well at one time and the next day they're sick. You don't know what can happen. And so that's why every night, every night and every day in church, we need to treat it like it's our last. And God, I'm just asking God to please, brethren, please pray for me. Because I want God to help me. I want God to help me first. I don't want to be praying for other people and teaching other people and preaching other people and myself are cast out. I'm not, I don't want to be a Pharisee or Sadducee and I don't want to be a hypocrite. I want God to touch me. That's why I'm looking for God for myself. And brethren, please, when you're going through, when you're going through your trials or this week that's going to pass, don't forget the words that have been said. Because we don't want to come to church next week and then we're heavy, we have to get light again. Then go next week, we heavy and then light again. That's not how it should go. And that's why some that's why brethren also, brethren grandma, some brethren, they need to come out during the week too. Because during the week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then fasting. Everyone, we're praying, we're fasting, we're crying, we're looking to God that God can deliver us, God can deliver somebody, and then as soon as we come Sunday, there's just a heavy weight. That's not how it should be. And every day, even if you can't come to church, still believe and still understand that God is everywhere. And remember the song where it says, Lord, I've heard of showers of blessings. Because we've heard of it, and everyone, we need to pray that the showers of blessing will fall on everybody. And brethren, if the showers of blessing have fallen on you, don't pray for other people, pray for yourself. Pray for yourself first and pray that the showers will fall on you first. Because we don't, we don't have no time to be a hypocrite. There's no time. Because if God should come right now, if, as God Pastor always says, if God sh should come right now, yes, grandma, the Bible says each one receiving justly his due. The Bible said that let the righteous be righteous still, let the holy be holy still. I don't let the filthy be filthy still. And I don't want to be like the chaff which the wind driving away. I don't want to be somebody that is cold from Monday to Saturday and then on Sunday I'm hot like fire. I don't want to be lukewarm because I don't want to be like the chaff which the wind driving away. I want God to touch me. And I'm just asking God to help all of us that when we come in church, we won't come in church and take it as a joke. And when we come in church, we won't be ungrateful. We need to be grateful. The more grateful we are, the more praises God will get. The more grateful we are, the more showers that will descend. And brethren, please, just keep praying to God and keep asking God and keep saying to God, even in your hearts, keep saying, even me, Lord. Even me, even me. The song says he can, he can hear your faintest cry and he will answer by and by. It says, even me. I don't, God, I've just asked, Grandma, I'm asking God to help me because I've heard of it, I've heard of it. I've heard of what God can do. I've heard of what's happening in grandpa's time. God was just, the way that God was just coming, God, it's like you could touch, it's like you could touch God. Like the Holy Ghost was so tangible. The presence of God, even it was so tangible. And I'm saying, God, God I said, God, I said to God, I said, God, aren't you the same God that you were then? Are you not the same God that you were then? So what is the problem? So why can't you come? Why are we not, why can't we feel your presence? Why not? If you're the same God that was in the 70s, in the 60s, what about now? And you know, the problem is, Grandma, it's the, it's the people. We can't, we can't keep, it's not, the way that it is, Grandma, it's like we're trying to, trying to blame God. It's not God's fault, it's our fault. We need to go and we need to go. As, the, as um, Hannah was saying, the woman with the issue of blood, nobody forced her to touch Jesus. Nobody had to pray and say, please touch Jesus, please touch Jesus. Nobody said that to her. She pushed herself. She went and she pushed herself. And 
she was, and even we need to be obedient to the word of the Lord. When I see when God was calling the disciples, they said that they straight away, Grandma, straight away, they put their, they took down their net and they went to, they went with Jesus, straight away. And I'm asking God to help us because we need to just launch out in the deep and touch the hem of God's garment. Um, Grandma, just please pray for me. Um, I've been in church my whole life. I've heard so many preaching, so many songs, so many things. And I'm just asking God to please help me. Because when I see, I can't, I don't want to be in church for 20, 40, 30 years. And you're, st and you're still, you're still lost. How, you're in church for so long and you're lost. God can't touch you. God, Brethren, please pray. Please pray to me that God will touch you and God will save you. In Jesus' name.
the cable and I started thinking that I'm, I, I probably took my eyes off from when I was down there. But I was going all across here thinking that I was doing the right thing and I came right up to the wrong cable. And brethren, I was looking into it that we should be obedient to the word when it comes out. And I was reading in Matthew, it was, um, Matthew chapter 1 and it says, verse 21, it says, no, verse 20, it says, But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not, and take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is being interpreted, God is with us. And in verse 24 says, Then Joseph, being raised up from his sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden, bid, bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not until she had brought forth a firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. And I was looking into it, brethren, that through obedience of the angel, life was born into the world. And I said, if Joseph could have easily said, no, I'm not doing that. And he could have went and stayed where he is and then Herod would have killed out Jesus and that would have been that. But through obedience to the word of God, he went and done what he needed and then Jesus was basically the savior of the world. And I'm saying for us in here, that it's imperative and important that we are obedient to the word. And even the song came up and it was singing, um, I believe God, I believe God, ask what you will and it shall be done. And then it says, trust and obey. Then you can say, I believe God. And that's my encouragement, brethren, that we'll trust and obey God. Because God, as Sister Kerry said, God wants to do a mighty thing in here. And he will do. But it's for us to get in line. As she said as well, it's not about us waiting for God. It's God waiting for us. God is ready with his hand, his hand stretched out. And it's just for us to get in line. And Evangelist Cameron always says that we have to have a strong, um, a light conscience. And brethren, it's a thing where you can be, it happened where you get baptized and you've got that zeal for God. And there, if you, like Sister Sherman said, if you do just something simple like a lie, it hits you. And your conscience says, you know what? God needs to be in here and I can't have sin in here because God doesn't dwell in sin. And when we continue to do that and we continue to repent and die daily, as the scripture says, then we will continue to see God. And I was looking into a thing that um, even like Evangelist Williamson was saying um, last week, where... The, the brethren were making up commotion and everything that what happened last week yeah. and I was looking into it brethren as children of God we can't put God in a box when we want him to and then we make him big when we want so it's a thing where I've got a cold or I've got a headache or oh, let me pray to God for this God can do that yeah. but then when it comes to COVID when it comes to cancer when it comes to big big sin God can't do that and it's a thing where God is what you make him and brethren I was as I said before when I look at I'm, I do drawing and there's a thing called perspective where there might be a building over there but from here it looks tiny because we're far away but the closer we get to the building the bigger it becomes and the same thing with God the closer we draw to God the bigger he will be in our lives and that's my encouragement brethren that we'll draw close to God and that he'll draw nigh to us and that God will get glory and praise in Jesus name praise the Lord Jesus Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. I give God all the praise, the glory, and the honor that belong the tongue to Him. Thanking him that one day when I wasn't thinking of him, he thought of me. Yes. 
Master, when he was on the cross, I was on his mind. I greet my beloved mother and pastor. I greet all the officers, all the sweet saints of God. I greet you all in Jesus' name. Um, God is truly amazing. Um, there is so much to thank him for. There is so much to exalt him for. I've been truly blessed. Um, hearing the, 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 the encouragement, hearing the testimonies, hearing the songs, um, God is truly, truly to be praised. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. Um, there's, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of words that have gone through the songs that I, 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 I was just upstairs and I was just worshiping and I was encouraging my soul um, because the words are a light into my path. And I'm thanking God one more time for his mercy um, for sparing my life. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, I don't know where I would be tonight. But I am so glad that one day my mother decided that she was going to give her heart to God. That was 42 years ago. She decided that she was going to, even though she had a two-year-old and a two-month-old baby, she wasn't married, but she was with my father. But she decided that it's either the man or God. She made that decision and she gave her heart to God. The two month old baby standing here today. Not just that, the two year old is still in church. And then after that, you, after me, you had another four. One was still waiting on. But the other three are in church. There's a four upstairs. And there's one here. God is truly amazing. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Not just that, but the grandchildren yes. are in church. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. I, I heard a lot of things were said. Um, but one of, the, one of the last words that was said was brought by Brother Joel is that being obedient to the word. Yes. So if you're in your moment, yeah. and when I say in your moment, you're in your own world, yeah. and you're looking for an answer, yeah. because there are times it comes a point where you have to ask yourself questions, yeah. and you look for answers. Yeah. What do I mean? comes a point where you're in school where you have to ask yourself, what do I want to be when I finish my education? What do I want to achieve? Then after that, you, you start working. Then you ask yourself, what do I want to achieve through my work? Do I want a house? Do I want to have months where I can go on holidays whenever I want to. Do I want a car? You ask yourself questions. And by asking yourself questions, you make the decision, this is what I want to achieve. So this is what I'm going to work towards. So it comes a time sometimes when we are troubled on every hand. And there are times where you ask yourself questions. But I want to know that if you have been listening tonight, the answers have been given. So you're in your own world, and you're hearing a voice saying to you, try me. And you're asking yourself, 
don't, I don't understand. You hear a voice that you find a church and go to. Yes. And you say to yourself, I don't understand. Amen. You hear a voice that you go down on your knees and pray. Amen. You say to yourself, I don't understand. But I'm saying to you tonight, listen to that small, still voice. Yes. Because that small, still voice is Jesus telling you which way to go. You've heard a song, he's there all the time. He's been there all the time. When you're going through your troubles, he's there all the time. When you don't know who to turn to, he's there all the time. I'm talking to those who are not saved. Sometimes you may be in a position where you're a little bit confused because trouble is on every hand. Yes. We get there sometimes. Yes. So the writer says, in my distress, I cry unto the Lord. But in your moment, you, you, you try to find a way out. So you might turn to something for some sort of comfort. Amen. You might turn to somewhere <clears throat> to try and find a solution. Amen. So you might turn to the drink. Yes. You might turn to the woman. You might Well, 
I used to take my, the food out of the house and go with my friends and we used to cook. And I was thinking, it was good old times. Yes. So then I heard somebody on the radio this morning and he was saying that uh, he didn't have much money when he was younger, but he, he, he took it and he buy some chicken back and some flour. Yes. And he curried chicken back and yes. some flour yes. and something. And he, he, he had some lemon. Yes. And I smiled. Yes. I said, I said to the boy, especially when the lemon is
Just trust in Him. God can do it. Hold on, somebody. Hold on, somebody. 